Welcome everyone to Journey 2020. Thank you so much for joining us this evening um, as we uh, have another look at India. Uh, this week we are exploring the sights and sounds of India, looking at uh, particularly the work of our partner, ba Bangalore City Mission, who are based in Bangalore. And someone who knows BCM very well uh, is Diane Wicks, who is with us this evening. Welcome, Diane. Thank you. Thanks, Joanna. Hi, everyone. Now, um, Diane, you have first-hand experience um, living and working in India with BCM. Perhaps um, I'm really interested to hear a little bit about your experiences, and I'm sure some of our um, viewers watching are also really, um, really keen to know from you, coming from Australia, what it was like. So tell us, how, how did it all begin? How did you find yourself in India? Well... India really wasn't the place where I wanted to go. I, I had <laughs> visited it twice uh, as a tourist, and I remember coming back and telling my friend I could never live there. But I think God had other plans, and um, I was coming up for retirement from a career in nursing, and I just felt him challenging me to give him two years overseas. And so when I said yes, it was a case of, well, where to go. And uh, my first choice was Cambodia and then Timor-Leste, and neither of those worked out. But I had saved a, uh, I, I regularly get the World Share newsletters, and normally I read them and throw them out, and, or recycle them, how's that? <laughs> But th this one I had saved, and the back of it featured Jonathan from BCM, and in it he mentioned the word volunteers, and I just kept coming back and back to this. So I thought, okay, the other two didn't didn't work. I'll, I'll try this one. Explored it, and just got a green light all the way. <laughs> That's incredible. Did you? <laughs> Did you get much pushback from people around you? I mean, this isn't that isn't your regular retirement plan, really, to to travel to India. Um, I think the only ones that mattered was family, <laughs> in terms of pushback. And uh, um, part of my family was really encouraging and and just said, "Well, go." And one of my fears was. But what if something happens? What if I have a stroke and, and I end up over there? And he said, Mom, we'll come and get you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's terrific. And, and so um, tell us about how, what were your first impressions? Landing in, in India, a different, different kind of uh, place. Um, what was it like? Um, it was exciting. It was, um, it's just such an assault on the senses. There is so much... Um, uh, color and noise and the tastes are different, the smells are different. Um, yeah, that was probably the, the uh, original thing. Um, traffic is uh, horrendous and uh, got a, yeah, a photo coming up just to show you. Um, it's so noisy, people are always honking horns and um, I think the road rules really depend on what size of vehicle you have. But um, I loved riding in one of these autos. It's like, it's like this little golf buggy with um, a lawnmower engine in it. And you just go hurtling through the streets of Bangalore and you know, the, the scarfs flying out with the wind. And you th I just have to pinch myself to think, is this really me? Am I really doing this? <laughs> yeah. But um, just all the, the, the color, the women's clothing was beautiful and, and they just looked so elegant and it was sparkly and bangles and uh, just so pretty. And I, it made me realize how conservative I have been in my dress. Oh, interesting. Yeah. The, the, the smells too. Um, I, I've smelled the worst smells and the best in India. <laughs> and I don't think, I won't go into the worst smells, but I will tell you um, there's nothing like walking behind a teacher who has a jasmine garland in her hair, um, similar to these flowers, but not quite like that. And the smell is wonderful. It just takes you to a different place. Yes. Yeah. I think it often is the smells that are, um, uh, yeah, that are so distinct about different countries that, that we have the opportunity to travel to. And um, what were you doing at BCM? How long were you there for and what was your focus? Okay, I, um, I went for two years and although my skills were in nursing, what they needed and, and were looking for was a teacher, okay. an English teacher. So I um, became an English teacher. I took a uh, mm -hmm. teaching English as a second language course um, mm -hmm. online and that, that helped prepare me. Uh, but I, I taught English to the senior classes, years seven to ten. 
Okay, great. And I think um, we, I think you've provided us with a, a photo that's coming up of showing you in the classroom. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Yeah. Um, but tell us, was it was it difficult um, transitioning from being a a, a nurse to a teacher? Uh, in in some ways, yes, um, it had its challenges, and I guess like every teacher, every night I spent a lot of time preparing uh, for the next day. But it it really did deepen my dependence on God, and it showed me that He doesn't need your skills; He wants your availability. Mm -hmm. These gorgeous children were some of the different classes. If we can just go back one to to showing the blackboard uh with the class yes i think we've uh, got um a shot of you in the in the midst of teaching yeah yeah and the classes are so big like they were i mean by our standards they were big they're probably um uh, 35 to, to 40 students in each one and their main resources was a blackboard so every morning you the teachers got two pieces of chalk and those were your resources for the day yeah. and it just amazed me how uh, how resourceful teachers can be with yeah. resources yeah and what did you what were your impressions of the other teachers and the, of the team at bcm all um all dedicated i think most of them had fun teaching mm -hmm. like they that they they realize the students come from um a, a background where they can struggle mm -hmm. and um yeah, and so there's there's an empathy there um, mm. to help them along, and and lots of patience with them. Mm. Yeah, and it's a good point to explain. I should um, note. Um, so we uh, well chose partner with Bangalore City Mission, um, and it's it's a school, but it's also much more than a school, isn't it? In in terms of the the work that they do there, and um, and particularly having a real heart for the underprivileged and for um, trying to. Um, assist particularly children who are in poverty and, and to get them out of poverty, especially through Christian education. Yes. Um, so, um, and uh, yeah, you mentioned about this, the school, the classes, uh, the, the sizes of the classrooms, and we can see that there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So what about daily life? What was that like? Um, it, it was a little different to what I was used to. Uh, for me, uh, because of the length of time that I was there, I rented my own apartment. Mm -hmm. And it was a couple of kilometers from the school. And of course, there's no way I was going to drive there or buy a vehicle of any kind. So um, this, I went to school on the school bus. The uh, school bus picked up uh, some of the teachers and the children from the villages, and they came right past my door and picked me up. So that was really good. I spent the day in, at school. Um, I'd cook for myself at night, um, lots of different ingredients to use there. Mm -hmm. And I had a little balcony, so I could uh, grow a few flowers and a touch of home, I guess, or something pretty. Yeah and yeah. um watch the world go by yeah but, um i just found the uh fruit was sensational these <laughs> pomegranates um i was i hadn't tried them before then and and they were good <laughs> i could uh, walk to the shop for groceries and as soon as i saw that i could get peanut butter and good coffee i knew i would be fine <laughs> yeah but the essentials there <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Was there anything that surprised you about your, your journey there and your time with BCM? I think initially what surprised me was um, the team, Jonathan and his team um, that he built around him. Like, I know that's his, what he does. He's, he's the director and he runs it. But what inspired me was his total commitment to it. Um, I mean, it was clearly a calling for him. Mm. And... Um, yeah, if that just, I don't know, I learned so much from them uh, in, in just seeing the, uh, the dedication to the school and the community around them. And um, yeah, it, that was, that inspired me probably the most of anything. Mm. Were, were there any um, pivotal moments, often when, when you have these incredible experiences, there's pivotal moments that you come back to and you remember, are there any of those that really stood out for you? Yes, <laughs> the short answer. Um, probably more than than one or two. And uh, can I just share a few with you? And, and these are just random. Yeah, please okay. do. <laughs> okay. Well, shortly after I I arrived, so 
I'm about to teach. I haven't taught before. Huge classes. So I asked the uh, headmistress if I could team teach She's for a week. And she said, sure, no problem. So she comes with me. Monday morning, off we go to the year sevens. And I sit in the back and observe as she teaches. Good. So we go, we go on to the next class, but she says, I'm going to be a couple of minutes late. Well, the rest is history. She never showed up. That was my orientation and I just had to plunge in. <laughs> so, Sink or swim. <laughs> that was it, yeah. yeah. So that was probably one of the first ones. Yeah. Um, another time I, um, I had a friend come to visit me and with the help and the cooperation of BCM, we put on a women's seminar um, and it was around the topic of the gift of being a woman. Mm. So women's seminars are non-existent among India's poor. Yes, if we could just get yeah, great, leave this on for a moment. Um, so, um, and, and the women there, like Tracy's talking about the gift of being a woman. But frequently, these women are uh, brought up to believe that they're a burden to the family. They're not a gift. Mm -hmm. And so we organized a full day event, about 80 women. See how beautiful they are in their, in their dresses, their saris and things. Um, they, they came to it. And we included a bit of imagination and, and games in the day. And some of them had said that they never had a day off for themselves. Um, they never had a time to play. This is one of the, the um, games uh, that we played. And, and most gave up a day's wages just to come. Mm. But the surprise and what was memorable kind of about that day too was that it was nine o'clock in the morning. It was to start and there were only a few women present. And we thought, where are they? Why aren't they coming? And what we found out was that, um, well, first of all, um, the team has sent the school bus out to the villages, six of the villages, to pick up the women to bring them in. And the school bus had been stopped by the police. And it wasn't because there were 45 women on a 30-seater bus. It was because there were adults on a school bus. Um, you know, was there something illegal going on here? Mm -hmm. And so once that was sorted, then the seminar started and all went well after that. <laughs> yeah, and then we were I imagine you uh, had to get used to things not running all, all the time to plan. <laughs> yes, yes. One story that, that made me uh, really stop and, and realize conditions was um, one of my students didn't have her homework done. Mm. And I asked her why. And she said, because the drain has flooded in front of my house. I said, and why is that a problem? But it floods the house. So she couldn't do her homework because her house was flooded and she had nowhere to sit down. I thought, oh, wait, uh, yeah. We don't realize the effort some children go to in order to get an education. Mm. And, and the, the multifaceted um, obstacles that sometimes they have to overcome in order to get to school in the first place. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The, 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 the last story I'd like to share, it didn't even happen in Bangalore, but um, when I, I came home for a two week break between the, the two years that I was there and um, I was visiting family and my two young grandchildren um, showed me into their playroom and I looked at their bookcase and they had more, their shelves were lined with books, new modern books with beautiful illustrations and I thought they have <laughs> they have so many more than the 500 kids as Sinclair's had. Mm. And that really um, kind of broke my heart in a way, not because it wasn't a good thing that there were these books there. That's a wonderful thing, but it was the inequality of yeah. resources. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I guess the, the, the happy news there, happy ending to that is before I left, um, the, the children had put together a great big box full of their books that were soon on their way to Sinclair's. So, yeah. 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 All memorable moments. Yeah. Well, it brings us, um, that, that story really brings us well into the story of sponsorship at, at Bangalore City Mission. Um, so World Chair, we sponsor many, many children through the school. Um, it, did you have a chance to work alongside and teach any of those children? 
because I was teaching, these are the children that I taught. Um, and probably 70% of them had all come from disadvantaged, Ill illiterate families. So these kids were the first generation to get some education. Um, and if it wasn't for, for World Share sponsorship, these kids wouldn't be there. They would be working beside their parents or uh, probably best case scenario, they might be in a, a state school. And I had opportunity to visit them and one of them. And um, there was probably close to a hundred children. They were in one room with one teacher mm -hmm. and um, the school only went to, to grade five. So, I mean, it's just so limited. It's so different to what children get at Sinclair's. It really yeah. started. Yeah. So those that sponsor children are legends. <laughs> That's a shout out to any sponsors who are watching. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, the other thing I saw though, Joe, was that um, it's not just about the children. It's not just about the education. Um, I was taken around to uh, uh, see a couple of villages that had clean water because of BCM. Mm -hmm. um, they, I, in the summer when school wasn't on, I spent some time in the uh, primary health clinic. And that's in a rock quarry community. Um, yeah, so valuable and, mm. and free health service for, for them. Um, they also have run the vocational skill centers. So sponsorship is so much more than just the child's education. Yeah, and so this is a photo you, you took at one of the centers? That's right, yep. Yeah. You see the, the women sewing, um, they're, they're taught skills. They have specific things to do. I think the course is nearly 12 months long. And, uh, and the ladies sitting on the floor are making uh, Christmas crafts, Christmas decorations and things. Yeah. yeah. Another one with uh, one of the ladies making, yeah, doing mm -hmm. an angel. Oh, uh, lovely. Yeah. Well, this is the health clinic, um, the nurse in the corner. And um, yeah, just, just providing a, a really good service, being out there. And uh, the, if you can see the baby uh, in the lower corner, the baby's being bathed. The water is so limited that um, they only have one small pot of water and they put the baby on their legs and bath them that way. And the baby loves it because it's skin on skin. And uh, yeah. Mm. yeah, that's good to see. This picture just speaks to me so clearly about the difference between child sponsorship and not. Mm. You see the children in the music program. The girls on the right-hand side are very similar in age, maybe slightly older, uh, but they're the ones without the education. They are carrying rocks in that container that the one, first girl has by, the, by her side, carrying that down into the, the school building while it was being reconstructed. So the, the difference is wow. so stark. Yeah, that's a really powerful um, comparison there. Mm. Um, did you, I imagine there were times where this was, um, your experiences were quite challenging, seeing that um, level of, of um, poverty and injustice, if you like, in the way that, that different people um, in this world live. Did you, in your, in your time at, at Bangalore, did you see God at work through this? Yeah, yeah, I did. I saw... Um, I, I saw the grace of God uh, being extended nearly every day um, through Sinclair's and the teaching, BCM. Um, I, saw, I saw so much of idol worship and um, family worship, things like this. And, and, and I saw God working and pushing back that darkness. Um, an, an example is... Um, Vinod and he came to Sinclair's in year seven. This was now year nine. I asked them if there were any highlights of the year when it came to the end of the year and and Vinod said that well I came to school as a Hindu and uh, but he learned about Jesus and he now follows him. Mm -hmm. and, and I saw the grace of God in, in, in the girls just in seeing very shy, quiet, retiring girls, they, they, they just grasped confidence and they found a voice, that they did have a voice, as they realized that their lives had value. Mm. With, even with the caste system, I saw attitudes changing. Um, with 
education and the knowledge of how God sees them, they come to realize that they don't have to follow in their parents' footsteps. They don't have to do exactly what their father did. Um, I met um, one delightful young man who was an early student of Violet's in the school, and um, his father was a vegetable seller, so it was expected that he would be that too. But with his education, he just went on. He uh, went to university. He's now in public relations and he's a businessman. Yeah. So far from a vegetable seller. Mm. And nothing but the grace of God does that, I reckon, the, the transformation that can occur. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I saw, I talked with a teacher and he, he really inspired me too. So um, he and his wife go and they visit homes in their neighborhood after school. And he will knock on the door and he asks them if they know who Jesus is. Well, Hindus have many gods, so they're open to hearing about another one. So sure, tell me about this Jesus God. And so he does, and he offers to pray for them. And two weeks later, he'll come back and he'll revisit the same house. And this time they ask him right in and they want to know more because they, they've seen their prayers answered. Mm. Uh, and that, that for me was a real wow moment yes um, but I, I saw god at work in changing me i left australia as a volunteer and i left india as a missionary mm. i just had a a change of perspective on things and uh, now my street and my city are my my mission field yeah mm -hmm. yeah how incredible that it's made such an impact on you um and and particularly in in as you say as you head into retirement that's uh that's incredible okay. what 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 would you say when from your observations of being there what were the the greatest needs that you came across within bangalore um there were significant needs um definitely um but the greatest need it's to know the truth the truth of the gospel um because the truth will set them free and so with uh, knowing the gospel message, they can break free from the caste system and free from witchcraft and idolatry and ancestor worship. Um, you know, I saw evidence of bonded slavery and, and there, I know there was sex trafficking going on and alcoholism was a big problem. But uh, it all comes back to the transformation that, that, God can give and mm. we have a savior who's come at a great cost to rescue them and most of them have never heard about it. You obviously were really moved by the experiences that you, you had and, the, and, the, um, and what you saw. Do you feel like you were able to make a difference or what, what made a difference? Well, um, I didn't go to make a difference. I, I went to be obedient to God um, and I went to serve. But um, I did make a difference. And, and I think it was just being there makes a difference. When people realize that a stranger uh, will come and, and join in with them in, in doing what they're doing, uh, that has to be encouraging. And I came to realize that uh, um, probably after the first year or so that, uh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> but God did provide an, an opportunity for me to make a difference. And that was with the library when uh, Jonathan was showing and VJ were showing me through the school, they, they showed me the library and uh, it was a, um, um, a storeroom where they had stored some extra books. And um, there was probably a couple of hundred of older books there. That's all, all they had. And once a year, the teachers would come and they'd um, gather up some books. They would take them back to their classroom. And that was their library period for the year. Wow. So, with Jonathan and VJ's full support, um, I was able to, um, well, th the library was transformed, let's put it that way. And um, the room was rearranged and books came from my home church. Um, I learned to catalog the books, was able to teach the teachers the Dewey system and uh, educate the children uh, in how to use it. And weekly library periods became a part of the school. So this is personal. <laughs> he, it was his first day in the, can we go back a couple? 
Thank you. I just go back to this little boy even um, with the dinosaur book um, to see the look on, on a child's face when they line up to take their first book home on loan uh, was just priceless. Yeah. Is it still there now? I mean, because I imagine you're still in touch with Jonathan. Is it still going strong? Yes. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, they have had a renovation. And so the school um, has a new library and the last photos that were just up there um, show the new library. So it's very spacious and they've got lots more books and uh, it's still just as loved as it was. There it is. That's oh, the new wow. library. Yeah. Still yeah. as loved now as it was in the past. That's incredible. Yeah. I guess it's on hold at the moment with COVID, but um, yeah, they will return. <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. And what about, um, how was it to leave? Two years is a long time to spend somewhere and investing yourself in community and relationships. What was that process of leaving like? I left with mixed emotions. Uh, they gave me a wonderful honouring send-off and um, it had been such an adventure for me that in many ways I knew I wouldn't find anything like that again. But um, I also felt that that part of my journey was over and it was time to come home. Hmm. Sure. And have you stayed in touch with, with many of the people that you met while there? Quite a few. I've been back a couple of times and I love getting back to the school and uh, meeting people again, re reacquainting with some of them. Some of them, um, a couple of them I am in, in regular contact with and uh, as well as, you know, a friend or so that I've met not connected to the school. So I'm just waiting for borders to open. I'd love to. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like many, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, and you, a few years ago, you actually ran a, a big fundraiser for, for Bangalore City Mission to help spread the word and, and raise funds. How, tell us about that. What was that like? Well, this was probably World Share's fault. <laughs> <laughs> because um, the following year when I came home, they, uh, they brought uh, Jonathan and Satish over to Australia. And I had the opportunity to introduce him to some of my church friends. And they were just so captivated by their story and by them. As, in, as men of integrity. And uh, one of my friends is a musician and he came up to me afterwards and he said, we should do a jazz night and raise some money for them. So I agreed and organized a committee and, and we really had a wonderful night. Um, it was just in a lovely venue and we had this awesome jazz music provided by John and his friends, um, no charge. <laughs> and uh, while well, well, we ate dinner and we had a... Uh, a live auction of services and goods that had been donated and we had a silent auction and all up we raised ten thousand dollars and we sponsored five children so Fantastic. yeah and by then the new extensions of the, for the library were well on their way so that money went a considerable way to uh, furnishing that yes yeah it is it's so great speaking to you john because I our vision here at WorldShare is about connecting lives and you are an epitome of that. We really do believe that when we connect with brothers and sisters overseas um, with our, our shared vision to transform lives, it's not only the lives overseas that get transformed, but also the lives <clears throat> here in Australia. And so um, it's fantastic to see those relationships and those connections and the, the impact it's made on you and, and also on, on BCM. Um, how how's it been? I mean, we know at the moment BCM are facing extreme challenges with COVID. Um, the the amount of cases that are going on in India right now is is fairly terrifying, and the needs facing BCM are, are huge. Um, how have you um, how are you feeling? I guess about about being away from them and trying to support them as they go through um, such a, a a difficult time. Yeah. Yeah, I really feel for them. Um, uh, the, but the area where I can support them is, is you know, in praying for them, but, but also financially. Um, they did the uh, food drive. I don't know uh, whether that's still current. I think now that it's relaxed somewhat, uh, they're in a better position. But, but um, yeah, providing food to so many of the community that, that simply um, th their jobs just vanished and they, they couldn't leave their houses for work. And these are daily workers. So, so what they earn that day, they buy their food with on the way home that night. And, uh, you know, it was devastating uh, mm -hmm. to see that this was happening. And just the turmoil, the, the difficulties that it must be for the school and the teachers to have to uh, reinvent themselves for online learning. And they're mm -hmm. like, they just don't have the resources that we have here. And 
how many of those children won't have internet? Like mm. here, we just give, give a child a tablet and say here, um, and they work through it, but it's so different there. Yes. Yeah. 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 And um, for anyone watching, part of the, the purpose of, of spending this week focused on India is to be able to, to support them and work with them at this time as they do face so many challenges. Um, we are looking for, for more child sponsors um, and to support the children. And uh, BCM is doing incredible work in being able to continue their education. One of the things we're really concerned about globally is, is the impact on children's um, education and interrupted in their education. There's a huge risk that many children will not go back to school. <clears throat> and that's going to set back poverty um, many years. And so we're really keen to try to keep as many children learning during this time as we can. If you'd like to sponsor a child, please get in contact because um, there, are, uh, yeah, there are children waiting to be sponsored. Um, and the other thing is, is of course, the, the food support. Um, that is an ongoing need because, as, as Diane mentioned, and you know well, the um, daily workers, when they're not able to get out there and work, it means that they don't have that money for their food that night. And so we are particularly supporting um, uh, through the Women's and Children's Centre, making sure that the children are still able to get food, even if their parents are no longer working. So please um, get behind that if you can. In the comments, there's a, a link to be able to donate. Um, Diane, just to, I guess, um, to, to wrap this up, just one final question from me would be, um, what would you say to someone who is perhaps watching this thinking, oh, maybe I'd like to do something like that one day and, and, and do what Diane has done? What, what would you say to them? I would say, get off this Zoom and go and pack your bags. <laughs> um, once you can travel legally. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's an incredible um, adventure to just um, explore and, and see what happens. On a, on a mission trip, you may not see all the, the trendy tourist spots, but you will see where God is at work. Mm -hmm. um, and just to see firsthand how God is using nationals who already speak the language, they know the needs of the people, and to see them in action caring for the disadvantaged and the poor uh, in, in their own neighborhoods is, um, is really awesome to be a part of. Mm -hmm. It just helps us... Um, um, see what our role might be and, and, you know, is it praying specifically now that we've been and gone and seen what, what's happening there or can we provide needed resources? Can we volunteer for a while? Mm. And it, age doesn't seem to matter. I mean, look at me. Yeah. <laughs> Young people, older people. Um, a mission trip is just a radical thing to do. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Thank you so much, Diane. Thanks for sharing your experiences and, um, and I hope it is something that has inspired um, our, our viewers to really connect with the work of Bangalore City Mission. Um, and I'm yeah, so grateful for your time. So thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.